section, I wanted to share some thoughts that I've had on uh, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. This gentle call of the shepherd is a welcome sound to all those who have been laboring under the harsh taskmaster of sin and are burdened down by sorrow. This is a call that has gone out into the whole world. And those who are looking for relief from the chafing yoke of the flesh will respond in obedience and call out for mercy. The great shepherd has the power to free us from the bondage of sin and death. No longer are we slaves to sin and unrighteousness to obey its desires. He has granted us life, and we are now able to be fellow workers together with him in the kingdom of God. Romans 6, verses 17 and 18 says, But God be thanked that though you were once slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. In our former days, the days of our disobedience, we were bound to a yoke, to, bound and yoked together with sin. This yoke was not, it was not made for us. It was not suited to us. And so it was a cruel and heavy burden. It was hard to be born and chafed us and causing us great pain and suffering. In addition to this, we had a cruel taskmaster that had no care for us. This taskmaster drove us on regardless of our sorrow. It didn't matter if our burden was too heavy to bear. It just kept saying, just go, go, go. There was no relief. We were beaten down and oppressed. Our wounds were great and we were weak and ready to die. We hadn't been nourished. We hadn't been uh, given water to drink or food to eat. We hadn't been cared for. Romans 6.21 says, What fruit did you have then in the things which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Now it was in this condition that we were given the grace to lift up our heads and to hear the call that the shepherd sent out Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Consider how sweet a sound this is to hear for the sinner who has been smitten with the sorrow of sin, to think that you had no hope, and now suddenly there is hope brought into the picture, to learn that there is a way of escape, to flee to the Savior and find rest and nourishment in a time of great need. Brethren, this is indeed a welcome and a joyful sound, and God be thanked that we have all responded to this call and have come to the Savior. We've been called to rest, brethren, but in the same, in the very next verse, it speaks of taking on another yoke to, to begin a labor in a new way. Well, how can these things be to rest and labor at the same time? It seems a contradiction. However, not only is this true, but it's a necessity in the kingdom of God. We are God's servants, and God has no idle servants. There's a great difference between the yoke we were delivered from and the one we gladly bear now. The one we were delivered from was a heavy, chafing, painful, and unsuitable yoke for us. The one we bear with Christ Jesus is light, easy, and it's perfectly suited to the new man. Our old taskmaster, which was sin, under, under whose hard hand we labored, had no care for us. But the master for which we now labor is gentle and kind and compassionate. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. He cares for us as a shepherd cares for his sheep. When we are thirsty, he gives us the water of life to drink freely. When we are hungry, he feeds us with the bread of life. He leads us with his own hand. When enemies come to camp and camp round about us, he protects us. He drives them away. 
And when the storms of life come and would overcome us, he shelters us under the shadow of his wings. Mm -hmm. Not only this, but he is also our, our, our yoke fellow. Mm -hmm. He does not expect us to bear this burden alone, but labors with us. With such a master, then, it is no wonder that we can rest and labor simultaneously. Romans 6, and 23 says, But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In this manner, we are being taught the ways of the kingdom of God. We're being taught about God himself. God is a worker, and thus his people will work as well. Colossians 3, 17 through... Colossians 3, 17... And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is how we come in and labor right alongside with the Lord. When we, whatever we do, we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We do it with the, with, with the Savior. Also verses 23 and 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And there's something else that we gain in this laboring, something that, that the world labors for diligently and yet can never seem to attain, and that is satisfaction. We have a great deal of satisfaction in our labors for the Lord. What we experience of this now, however, is really only a first fruits of what is to come. The true and great satisfaction that we have to look forward to is the satisfaction that we will have when we are in glory, being able to look back on everything that has happened and that brought us to, uh, to, the, to heaven. We have this enduring hope that in the world to come, we will experience an eternal rest and an even greater satisfaction knowing that we've been faithful servants to God in our labors while on earth and, we, and that we will enter into a greater work to come in glory. And one of the things that I've personally learned is that when I'm leaning on Jesus and relying on his strength, then the yoke is easy and the burden is indeed light. But when I start to become weary and the burden is feeling heavier, it's either because I'm trying to labor on my own or perhaps the Father in his wisdom is putting more on me so that I will be able to be stronger and to be able to bear more. It is in this way that we grow stronger. If we, if we always bore the lightest load, we would never grow. So if we start to feel a, a, a heavier burden, I can look at it like the Lord has seen fit to grant me with more responsibility, with that he's seen fit that, that I'm strong enough to bear more and to not look at it as a punishment or uh, that I've done something wrong, but to look at it and be thankful that, that he's seen fit to give me more. Amen. But in either case, whether it be that I have done something wrong and, and I need to seek for forgiveness, or if the Lord is putting this additional load on me, grace is needed. In either case, mm -hmm. grace is needed in order to endure to the end. Amen. For the purpose of all of this is that we might be overcomers yeah. and stand before God acceptable on that day. In closing, I will read uh, 1 Corinthians 15:58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So brethren, as, as we begin our evening services here, there are going to be many opportunities that we have 
in the, in the times to come where we can enter into the labor of the Lord. This is something that we are very thankful for, considering that where we had come from, the yoke that we had borne, which was burden. It was it was hard to be born, but now we've been we've been able to enter in to this uh, labor that we can we can rest while we labor, and we can be joyful in this laboring. And so, anytime we have the opportunity to labor more or to labor more diligently, it is a joyful thing, and we can give thanks for it. Amen. Uh, Amen. So I'll have a word.